If any televised event in the past few days could prove how out of touch Britain's politicians are from the people, then this week's Prime Minister's questions was it. Labour, the SNP, the SDLP, the Liberals, the Greens, the Prime Minister and others were all as one as they told the UK to remain in the EU. There was no party leader in Parliament to represent the other side in next week's referendum. And that's even as the opinion polls show the country is equally divided over the issue. Labour's Jeremy Corbyn is now outraged about immigration, specifically overseas employment agencies advertising jobs in Britain. Will the Prime Minister today commit to the outlawing of the practice of agencies that only advertise abroad for jobs that are in reality jobs in this country? Does Corbyn think Cameron needs to get tougher on immigration? We are looking at that to see if we can, and we've announced this already, to see if we can ban that practice. As for the leader of the pro-independent Scottish National Party, Angus Robertson, asked questions, all supporting the policy of David Cameron on Europe. The Prime Minister thanked him by slapping him down, reminding him that things might be even worse than the experts predict if the UK votes for Brexit. To anyone who says, um, well, these warnings, of course, uh, they could be wrong or, or they could be inaccurate. Uh, and this is an uncomfortable point, perhaps, to make to the uh, right honourable gentleman. Of course, there were warnings about the oil price before the Scottish referendum. It turned out actually to be worse than the experts warned. One of the experts against Brexit is the WTO. And the deep-seated neoliberalism of the British Parliament was further reinforced by one Labour MP who didn't seem to know there ever was an uprising against the World Trade Organization in Seattle. The World Trade Organization say that if we leave the EU, we could face major tariffs on trade and we would have to renegotiate over 160 trade agreements. Does the Prime Minister agree with me that leaving the EU would hit hard work in families the most? Yes, of course he does. But as the House of Commons applauded institutions like the IMF and the WTO, what will the country think of them? And with parliamentarians so out of touch with the country, how divided will the British people continue to be about the EU, whoever wins the European Union referendum next week? That's it for today, but join us again on Monday when as Julian Assange enters his fifth year of arbitrary detention by the UK government, we ask if WikiLeaks will destroy Hillary Clinton's bid for the White House. Till then, get in touch via social media. Also, our condolences to the loved ones of West Yorkshire Labour MP Joe Cox, who was gunned down this week. The former Save the Children aid worker was a passionate opponent of UK arms sales to Saudi Arabia, and we'll have to see if her wishes for an arms embargo are honoured by David Cameron to ease the plight of tens of millions in Yemen. See you on Monday.